We're here today for Melvin Bernard Meyer. Most stories start at the beginning. We were able to find him and we brought him back home. This one begins with resolution, one 79 years in the making for Melvin Meyer and his family. To understand the journey, we have a guide you might call Jess Hoskins, the historian of the Yankee Doodle Dandy. 10 men started the mission in 1944 on a B-17 bomber, including Jess's dad. My father was underneath the plane in what was called the ball turret. Melvin was right in the nose of the plane. He's the bombardier. On that May day, German fighters attacked the lead aircraft. Four wrestled to keep the plane in the air long enough so the other six could survive. So I heard about these guys as a kid, and I, I learned about their sacrifice. It wouldn't be until 2012 when the military discovered the crash site of the B-17 flying fortress, the Yankee Doodle Dandy. From there, the remains and the artifacts were shipped to Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska for identification. For the military's forensic anthropologist, the stitches on the boot are a clue, the Bible and the shiny metal on a shirt. His navigator wings are actually still attached to um, his service shirt. Dad said that it was deeply disturbing and saddened the crew to see the remains of their plane, but much, much worse. They knew the remains of their buddies were theirs in the still smoldering wreckage. When you go home, tell them of us for your tomorrows, these gay there today. We can rest in peace because we are the chosen ones. Joanne Hogan calls Melvin Meyer my daddy's brother. She remembers the kind guy helping other kids. He became the guy who sacrificed so much so others could live. I think it's absolutely marvelous that all these men, all these people do all that work to keep these men home. This is mission accomplished. He's home. For Melvin's family, this brings answers to eight decades of questions. For Jess Hoskins, it's a chance to honor his dad's memories of 10 men. Wow. Service. Loyalty. Dedication. Sacrifice. We're told that B-17 crew named the plane the Yankee Doodle Dandy after they met the famous actor James Cagney. Cagney had starred in the film of the same name. A brand new dental school will open in southwest Missouri in just a few weeks, and Missouri desperately needs more dental professionals. Now this diagram right here shows how we compare to other states. Look at the top box here. That's California, dark purple top box there. Right behind it, this is Missouri. I'd break it down by counties, but the entire show me state is in what's called a dental health care shortage area. In an old grocery store, people aren't shopping for bread, milk or eggs. They need dental care. This was the first place that we could get Noah in. After a drive of an hour and a half, the ride to the OR room for a root canal is the shortest trip of the day and the end of a long process that started with a chipped tooth. We got referred to Joplin first and we set that appointment up. And then I started calling around to see if I could get in anywhere else faster it's because it was still going to take a very long time to get in. And this has been a three month process at this point. Missouri needs more dentists. In 12 years between 1990 and 2002, Missouri lost 642 practicing dentists. Since then, we've only replaced about half of them while our population grew. What we're finding is in rural areas where there are some more barriers. Uh, it does seem to be pretty common for patients to be referred from far away. We do get referrals from Columbia, Jefferson City, St. Louis, and Kansas City area as well. This is Jaden. How may I help you? Part of the problem, Missouri lost two dental schools in the last several decades. Three. But help is on the way. Kansas City University's brand new College of Dental Medicine opens in August. 
And Jaden Pace will go from the front desk at a Springfield dental office to the first class on the Joplin campus. So being able to, you know, help someone bring their smile back, um, that's something that I found that I really loved um, being a part of, and I wanted to be the provider in that role. It's hoped if we train them in Missouri, they'll stay in Missouri. Hopefully the rural location of that Joplin Dental School will attract those same dental students who want to practice in rural areas as they graduate. Hi, Kevin. Jaden may be four years from graduation, but she's penciled in the show me state for her future practice. But the goal would be to be a provider in this area, potentially in a rural community that didn't have a dentist before. She likes yogurt. And the nervous mom in a waiting room is grateful she found an oral surgeon. But back home in Carl Junction, there's a growing need that can't be fixed fast enough. We just got um, a letter saying that his dentist at Carthage Access has um, moved to somewhere else. So hopefully a lot of people are enrolling in dental school. Um, did you have a pre-order today? It looks like any other drive through Customers are rolling up. Perfect. Exact change. Right on the money. The product here isn't a burger with a side of fries. It's marijuana. Which it should be opening soon. Busy outside, but inside Mojo Dispensary, it's quiet. They've been waiting for state approval to open the store to recreational marijuana sales. You always think about safety. As a pharmacist, I always put that first. The neatly placed products range from cookies to gummies to salves and patches. It's a far cry from the Wild West of the street deal. This is a much safer process. Um, it is a closed loop system. Everything is grown in Missouri, manufactured in Missouri, and sold in Missouri, tested in Missouri. Yes, not only tested in Missouri, tested here in the Ozarks. Before you sample the product, slices of that main ingredient are tested in the small town of Galena. There's no sign for the lab. If you know where it is, they may already know you're coming. There's plenty of security here. In fact, that camera will follow you as you approach the front door. This is a high-performance liquor chromatography machine. Conti Cord Labs is a family-owned business with two married chemists at the wheel. The shop is one of only eight approved to operate right now in Missouri. This is where we uh, separate out and prep samples before they go into each of the individual analytical instruments. The lab takes the raw product like this, grinds it, preps it for the machines, and puts the dried pot, beeswax, or liquid through multiple tests. We're told one machine looks for 62 types of pesticides. So there's an enormous financial incentive to use pesticides, which are not gonna be good for the end user. Another machine will superheat samples and scan for heavy metals in the marijuana. If you use leaded water from leaded pipes to water your plants, it will be very strong in lead. Um, so we test for lead amongst a bunch of other heavy metals. Just one of these high-tech gadgets can cost as much as a car. It takes the eight employees about five days, a minimum of $500 to run samples through the system. A clean batch with no mold, E. coli, or pesticides carries a stamp of approval. And it all happens in that unmarked building in Stone County. I love this town. Galena was a great place to start a business. Just up the road, that product tested in Galena will soon be on sale in Nixa. As we shot this story, the state approved the opening. Yay! Customers can soon get out of the car and step inside. I'm ready to get my patients back in here. Oh, enjoy your bump of fat. We've missed them and they've missed us. Well, thank you.